Hello students, so today we will be learning gravitational redshift of a photon. Now consider a particle of mass m, small m, which is moving with a velocity of v when it is at the ground. So we know that initially it will have a velocity and it will go up to a certain height and that height its velocity will become zero and that it will start falling downwards. So let us say that the maximum height that this particle has ach achieved is a uh, year and let this height, this total height be capital H. Now we have to calculate capital H in terms of the velocity. Now from conservation of energy principle, we can say that the total mechanical energy in this position should be equal to the total mechanical energy in this position. So first of all, we'll calculate the total mechanical energy. First of all, this is the reference line. We'll consider this as the reference line, basically the ground line. So the potential energy at this position is zero. So I'm just simply writing PE, which is potential energy is zero. Also, we'll write the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy is given by half m v square, where v is the velocity of the particle, m is the mass. Now the total mechanical energy is nothing but addition of these two energies. Similarly, what I'll do, I'll write the expression for potential energy and kinetic energy of the particle in this position. So first of all, I'll just simply write that the PE dash or the potential energy in this case, it is given by mg capital H, which is mg into height of the particle. And now at the maximum position, the velocity of the particle is zero. So the kinetic energy will also become zero. So I'm simply writing Ke dash as zero. Now we know from uh, principle of conservation of energy that the addition of these two energies must remain constant. So I'll just write here that uh, potential energy plus kinetic energy should be equal to potential energy dash plus kinetic energy dash. So simply what we are getting is the uh, half mv square half mv square equal to mg capital H. Now what we are doing is we are simply uh, cancelling this small m small m term and from this we will get the expression of velocity as velocity will be given by root of 2g capital H. Now here my friends is the relation between the height of the the maximum height of the object and the velocity of the ground. Perfect. Now here we what we can observe is that the velocity of particle decreases at its potential energy increases. What happens instead of a particle, we introduce a photon here. So here is a torch and here is a photon. Now from Einstein's theory of relativity, we know that velocity of a photon, that is velocity of light always remains constant no matter what. But as soon as the particle reaches the top, its potential energy is increasing. So that energy should come from somewhere. Now we know that its velocity is not decreasing. So what will happen to the photon? Well, the theory says that the frequency of the photon reduces. And that reduce in frequency of the photon comes as a form of increase in its gravitational potential energy. So consider a photon here. Now let us say the mass of the photon is small m. Now photon is a photon and photon does not have mass. So what is this? What is small m? So yes, it is correct. It is true that photon is a massless particle, but there's a mass associated to a photon. Now how to calculate this associated mass of a photon here? We'll use the Planck's equation that is energy of a photon is given by h mu where h is the Planck's constant and mu is the frequency of that photon. Also from Einstein's e equal to mc square we know that energy is given by m into c square that is mass of that particle into velocity of light. So e equal to mc square is another equation equal to mc square. Now what we'll do is we'll simply equate these two quantities so I have h mu as a m into c square so from that I get the expression of m as h mu by c square. So here my friends is the equation or the expression for the mass associated with the photon. So yeah this small m is nothing but Planck's constant into frequency upon speed of light the whole square. Now this particle this photon is moving upwards now this photon is here in this position. So in this position let the let the frequency of the photon be mu and let's say the frequency in this position be mu dash. Okay. Now the total energy here, the potential energy is anyway zero because it is in ground and we have considered this as the reference line. And the kinetic energy that is uh, nothing but the energy due to the frequency is h mu where mu is the original frequency and now what's happening is whenever it is overcoming the gravitational force, its gravitational potential energy is increasing and its frequency is decreasing. But the potential energy in this case, in this case can I say the energy or the kinetic energy or the Planck's uh, Basically, the Planck's energy is nothing but h mu dash. Cool. Now, the potential energy in this case, the potential energy is given by mg capital H, where h is the height of that object. 
Now instead of small m, what will substitute? Will substitute this, which is uh, h mu by c square. So Planck's constant mu by c square times g h. So here is the expression for potential energy. Now from conservation of uh, conservation of energy principle, we can say that the addition of these two energies should be equal to addition of these two energies. That is the total energy should remain constant. So I'm just simply equating these two energies. So total energy in this position is nothing but uh, zero plus h mu, which is nothing but h mu. Is equal to the total energy in that position, which is nothing but h mu dash plus m g h, which is nothing but uh, h mu by c square times g h capital H, where capital H is the height and small h is the Planck's constant. Now, what's happening is that this Planck's constant is getting cancelled throughout, and we need expression for the changed potential energy or the sorry, the changed frequency or the final frequency. So the final frequency is nothing but the original frequency minus this uh, term will go here. So we'll get uh, mu g h by c square. Now mu dash is given by mu times one minus g capital H by c square. Now here, my friends, is the expression for the changed frequency. Now as you can see that it is a mu times one minus some expression. So what's happening is that the later frequency or the change frequency is lesser than the original frequency so the frequency of the photon is decreasing that means its energy is decreasing and that energy is going in the gravitational potential energy of a photon and that's the reason due to gravity the potential energy of photon increases but its own energy decreases and hence for the total energy remains constant and here we can see that the frequency is decreasing. Now, whenever the frequency decreases, we call it red shift and whenever frequency increases, we call it a violet shift. Why red? Because uh, frequency of red is lower than that of frequency of violet. So whenever frequency decreases, we call it a uh, red shift. And this red shift is happening because of the gravitational force, because this photon is overcoming the gravitational pull of a planet or of a star. And that's why we call it gravitational, uh, uh, we call it red shift of a photon due to gravity or gravitational redshift of a photon. Okay, now consider a star of mass capital M and radius of R and it is emitting light. Now that light is nothing but collection of photons. So consider a single photon here. Okay, which is having an original frequency of mu. Which is having original frequency of mu. So what happens is that uh, first of all we'll calculate the potential energy, total energy and then we'll just simply equate that to the total energy at infinity. So the energy in this position is nothing but uh, h mu that is the kinetic energy we can say and the potential energy of any particle is given by minus g capital M small m by r. Now first of all we have to calculate small m of a photon basically mass of a photon how we'll calculate like we calculated in the previous way we calculated h mu and then we equated it to mc square so from that we got the expression of mass of photon is nothing but h mu by c square we'll just simply substitute these things here so this i'll say this is the kinetic energy equivalent to kinetic energy not exactly equal to kinetic energy and this my friends is nothing but the potential energy now i'll just simply put the expressions here so cap minus g capital m capital R into instead of small m, we'll just substitute h mu by c square, h mu by c square. Now addition of these two energies is nothing but the total energy of photon in this position. Now what's happening is that the photon is traveling and is traveling way up to infinity. Now why is the photon traveling up to infinity? Because in infinity, at infinity, the potential energy of this photon is zero. So I'll just simply write potential energy equal to zero. And let's say the kinetic energy or say the energy of a photon is h mu dash where mu dash is the final frequency of photon when, when it reaches infinity. Now we know from the principle of conservation of energy that the addition of these two energies and these two energies that is the total energy should remain conserved, should remain constant. So basically we'll just equate the addition of these two energies is nothing but h mu dash. And the addition of these two energies is nothing but uh, h mu plus the potential energy and here we have a minus sign so it will become nothing but a minus capital G capital M capital R into h mu by c square. Now again the Planck's constant term will get cancelled out and we need the expression for mu dash. So mu dash is given by original frequency minus capital G M by capital R into mu by c square. Now what we can do is we can simply take this mu common and from that we get the expression as 1 minus capital G capital M R by C square. Now this my friends is the 
relation between the original frequency and the final frequency and as we can see here that this frequency that is the final frequency is reducing we can see it is one minus this so this is nothing but basically whenever a photon leaves the gravitational field or escapes the gravitational field in that case its final frequency is given by mu times one minus this is the universal gravitational constant capital m is the mass of that star radius r is the radius of the star and c is nothing but speed of light so here is the expression for the final frequency and we can see that the final frequency is reducing and that's why whenever frequency reduces we call it a red shift whenever frequency increases that we call it a violet shift and since the frequency here is reducing we call it a red shift and why is this red shift happening it is happening because of the gravitational pull or the gravitational force of that star and that's why this concept is known as gravitational red shift of a photon due to a planet or a star whatever it is thank you so much